In the most popular Christian book, The Purpose Driven Life, you will look long and hard in this book on The Purpose Driven Life to find the gospel. Now, I don't know how you could ever live a purpose driven life if you didn't know how to get into the kingdom of God or how to be saved. And as I went through the book, this is the gospel presentation, the only one that I found. First, believe. Believe God loves you and made you for his purposes. Believe God has chosen you to have a relationship with Jesus who died on the cross for you. Believe that no matter what you've done, God wants to forgive you. Second, receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. Receive his forgiveness for your sins. Is there anything missing there? What might be missing there? Repentance. So I invite you to bow your head and quietly whisper the prayer that will change your eternity. Jesus, I believe in you and I receive you. What Jesus? Who did what? Where's the resurrection? It goes on, if you sincerely meant that prayer, congratulations, welcome to the family of God. How does he know who's in the family of God? No repentance, no judgment, no hell, no heaven, no self-denial, no discussion of sin, no laying down of the law of God against which the sinner is broken, no sense of guilt, no sense of condemnation, no fear of eternal torment. That is an inadequate gospel. That is a gospel that I will tell you will contribute to apostasy. It will contribute to defection. Because people are going to come to that which they think is the saving message and when it doesn't do anything, they're gone. A shallow gospel presentation that doesn't present the reality of eternal judgment, the reality of the law of God, the reality of condemnation, eternal hell, it does not warn of God's wrath, that does not crush the sinner under the weight of his violation of the law of God, that does not make him stand before God guilty. A gospel presentation that doesn't do that isn't a faithful gospel presentation. And then to tell somebody, Welcome to the family. As if you knew, this is fantasy. Go there. Uh, repentance has been criticized for not highlighting repentance in the purpose-driven life and the way he would explain it is to say I totally believe in the, nece the necessity of, of repentance and I totally am committed to the call for repentance though I may not use the word as often as some would want me to so check out the reality if not if not the language emergent church Brian McLaren's new book off the charts uh, old-fashioned liberalism. It's his Rauschenbusch boil, boiled over, warmed over, he, he, he said. I'm not emergent. I, I could even tell you other things he said he's not, but that, that might offend uh, uh, too many people. Um, Memorize scripture every week, preaches for an hour, doesn't do any drama in worship, plants a church a year. Uh, rejects the prosperity gospel, zero faith in politics. And he gave me a long and elaborate explanation for why he did the inaugural prayer. And I don't, I don't think it would be right for me to, to share how he made that decision. But he hasn't talked to Barack Obama since that and has no desire to be uh, putting his faith in politics. He said, I, I, if, if, if politics were the way to change the world, I'd be a politician. The only thing that's going to change the world is changing people's hearts through the gospel of Jesus Christ, and on and on. So I, I'm a, I'm a, I need, I'm going to need help to know why I should feel bad about this decision. <laughs> um. Over the last two years, I've spent a lot of time flying around meeting with every country we go into. We meet with the government leaders, we meet with the business leaders, and we meet, meet with the pastors. 
We train their passion, but we also meet with these other legs of the stool so that they understand they have to bring the church to the table. It isn't going to happen without the church. There's no way it's going to happen without the church. If you can only work with people you agree with, you have just narrowed your army to a very small sliver of humanity. Because not even all Christians agree with you. I don't know if you figured that one out yet. <laughs> When I'm out working on trying to stop AIDS, I'll work with an atheist, I'll work with a gay person, I'll work with somebody who totally disagrees with me. If they want to work on an issue, fine, why? We're building a bridge. Live from Saddleback Church in Lake Forest, California, Pastor Rick Warren and presidential candidate Senator Barack Obama and Senator John McCain will participate in a special two-hour Saddleback Civil Forum on the presidency. Well, welcome to the Saddleback Civil Forum on the presidency. I guess you got my invitation. Uh, we're here at Saddleback Church here in Lake Forest, California, and tonight we're going to use the interview format uh, with these two candidates. Now, we believe in the separation of church and state, but we do not believe in the separation of faith and politics.